Um, according to our rules, I need to uh, poll everyone to see that they're all here. But um, Councilman Bowles? Present. Councilman Milliken? Present. Councilman uh, Magnato? Present. And Councilwoman Magnato and Councilman Mullinax? Present. All right. Um, so we are all supposed to um, identify ourselves before we speak, which I haven't done so. Um, so I'm Mayor Wolsey and um, the meeting is hereby called to order and um, I find that a quorum is here. And so the first item on our agenda is um, ordinance, emergency ordinance three to 2020 and a more, or an ordinance to amend our, our emergency ordinance pertaining to emergency meetings. Is there a motion in favor? So moved. Uh, a second. 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 Okay, so it's been moved. And actually, I, I guess we need to, um, Councilman Milliken made a motion in favor and Councilman Bowles seconded. On our agenda. We're supposed to identify ourselves before we say anything. Oh, sorry. That's all right. And um, so, any discussion? Our emergency ordinance pertaining to emergency meetings. Is there a motion in favor? So moved. Uh, this second. is uh, Dan Bowles. Sure. Sounds like there's some feedback going on. Okay, so it's been moved. And actually, I, I guess we need to, um, Councilman Milliken made a motion in favor and Councilman Bowles seconded. Honor, and, uh, We're supposed to identify ourselves before we say anything. Uh, uh, sure. That's all right. And um, so, we need to discuss our emergency ordinance pertaining to emergency meetings. Is there a motion in favor? Oh, this is, uh, this is uh, Dan Bowles. Sounds like there's some feedback going on. Okay, so it's been moved, and actually, I, I guess. Uh, let's. Um, I think we need to. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, Councilman Mullinax. Um, there is Dan, Dan. Councilman Bowles is right. It's a bad feedback. Yes. This is Bowles again. It just stopped. Oh, good. Okay. I think, I, can you all hear me? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think what yeah. happened is I was live, I started live streaming this to our YouTube channel and there's a little bit of a delay. And so when I was doing that, that's when that started. So I've undid the live streaming and I'll just post it to our YouTube channel after the meeting. Okay. Okay. Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. No comment. <laughs> I'm being facetious, but you know why. Hi, Bo. Hello. So the right, public does not have access to this meeting at this time. Got it. Where did well, our and, that, and there is, sorry, there is public access to the meeting through the Zoom. And we do actually have one attendee that is listening in. Um, they're not allowed to talk. Um, and there was that link to this Zoom meeting was advertised. Great. Okay. In I addition, misunderstood. we also have the YouTube. I misunderstood. I thought your access was only going to the public through YouTube, but okay. Yeah. All right. So um, <laughs> discussion. Please remember to um, say your name before you speak. All right, this is uh, Garrett Milliken. Um, I'd like to remind council at this point that I'm offering a substituted amended emergency ordinance for your consideration. Um, I believe we can second the posted version as we have already and vote on it and then maybe take up the other version um, after we uh, deal with the first one. Um, I'm going to vote against... Is there a second to... Um the um, amendment to the um, emergency ordinance. I second for consideration, Councilman Mullinax. Okay, and uh, discussion of the amendments. Yeah, um, I'm gonna vote against the first version, mainly because I would like to um, be more specific in identifying the different um, um, 
committees and commissions uh, to reflect what we passed in our February meeting with respect to the uh, um, committee structure of the town. Um, um, so I, I apologize. So do I take it that you are not uh, moving to amend um, the item on the agenda? You're just speaking to that you plan to vote against it. Yes, that's that's correct. All right. Well, um, I don't believe that the that procedure is possible. You can propose to amend by substitution. It's been seconded. We're discussing this amendment by the substitution. Okay, so uh, by substitution, you're talking about uh, the proposal that I put forward earlier. That would yeah. be the substitution. Okay, do I need to make a motion for that substitution you, at this time? I, I took it that you did. Okay. And the right. Councilman Mullinax Second. uh, has seconded it for um, consideration. Um, Councilman Mullinax, let's all remember we say our names before we speak, which I haven't been doing. So this is Mayor Woolsey. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. Now, Sorry. Uh, so I'll recognize um, Councilman um, Milliken to uh, speak to his uh, amendment. All right. Um, I guess if we were to compare the two versions of this emergency ordinance, uh, the one that I'm putting forward here is different from the initial one because we are um, actually going to exclude Planning Commission and the Board of Zoning Appeals from being included in these electronic meetings. I feel that the reason for this is because we don't have the opportunity uh, to allow the public their due process in the, in the uh, deliberations with respect to changes in planning and zoning. Also with respect to BZA. BZA is a quasi-judicial branch. Uh, it has a very set series of steps involved. And I just feel that it's important to include the public in those deliberations. Um, I think that on the side of the developers and the side of the property owners, I think that they could wait 60 days until we revisit these emergency ordinances, at which point we could get back to normal with our Board of Zoning Appeals meetings and Planning Commission meetings. I think that all the other meetings um, are fine. The Town Council meetings are fine. The uh, Citizens Committees are fine. Uh, these are things that can be done electronically because we generally don't have a lot of uh, public participation in that. The public is invited to participate and we don't have a public comment period in any of those meetings. Uh, so there's a difference in the commissions versus the councils and committees that we have at the town. And that difference has to do with, I think, the uh, need for public participation with the commissions and Board of Zoning Appeals. I, I, Any further discussion? I have a question, uh, Councilwoman Mignano. Um, I have a question. Is there any way that we could address it, adding the public participation in via these electronic meetings? Like, if the, like, like, is there any way that we could do that logistically so that we didn't have to postpone them? So this is Mayor Woolsey. Yes, it is possible to um, allow members of the public to speak at um, through Zoom or you know calling into these meetings. And of course, the ordinance in itself provides um, adequate access for the public to provide comments to council or to the BZA or to the Planning Commission by sending letters or emails, as would be usual. Um, my view is that um, the you know the the governing body of this town, the town council, any rules for public comment, which we do have, that are appropriate for us would be equally appropriate for the planning commission and the BZA. I would note that the planning commission or the BZA does not have generally public participation in their meetings any more than town council does. That those bodies do allow for an opportunity for public comment but there's really no reason why that public comment cannot be done through written means by emails, though it is also possible that we could allow oral public comment through technical means. So my, I have another question. Uh, this is uh, Councilwoman Mignano. Um, so, but sometimes like with the BZA, 
and and the planning there's like a back and forth between the public and the commission so and i i understand that as, as proven by the fact that you don't see my picture up here some people are more tech savvy than others so and some of the people that i've seen at planning and bza are older and may not have the technical wherewithal to to be able to participate like they normally do. I'm, I'm just trying to get a feel, do, you know what I mean? Do you understand what I'm saying, Mayor? Um, so this is Mayor Woolsey. No, I guess I'm, I'm surprised that the uh, Planning Commission allows members of the public to participate in, the, in their discussion. I understand that the BZA, there are people who give testimony that is the um, member of the public that might have a case before the BZA. And certainly we would need to make um, adequate um, make it uh, make a method for those people to, to participate. It's not simply making comments, written comments about what's going to happen, but the general public for these, especially the BZA, the general public should not be participating in a judicial proceeding and helping making the decision. And then in terms of the planning commission, it's important to understand that the planning commission is a recommending body to town council for nearly right. all of its tasks. And so what the public, their role at the planning commission, again, is just to simply give comments during the public comment period. And then um, they, the planning commission itself undertakes their deliberations just as town council would. And then they make a recommendation to town council, which will finally may ultimately make the decision. And we will have you know, the possibility of written um, comments to town council. Is this is Councilman Milliken. Um, one of the big differences also, uh, I guess the reason why I guess I'm more accept accepting of having town council meetings go on with business, we have, we have a fairly regular schedule. Uh, I think that our residents have a pretty good idea that on the third Thursday of the month, uh, we're going to probably have a council meeting at seven o'clock. So that's something that is uh, uh, a known factor. Uh, the problem that we have with PC and with BZA is that if we look at the last year, uh, Planning Commission met three times, Board of Zoning Appeals met three times. Um, now, when BZA meets, that's usually a pretty charged situation. Uh, Lots of interest comes from our town for BZA matters. I can recall uh, BZA meetings with over 100 residents for the car wash, uh, uh, tree removals, grand tree removals, uh, also usually yield a whole lot of passion from James Islanders. So the fact is, is that there is a participatory aspect to this with our commissions. And sometimes just the sheer number of public people who have an interest in a particular issue uh, is something that's important and should be recognized. I'm not sure you get the same feel for that if you're doing some sort of an email in or perhaps something that's what we're doing now where people just aren't going to have the ability uh, to have the technological skills to get on and participate. I think it ought to be as easy as possible for the public and having a public meeting is the way to get the public there. So well, this is Mayor Woolsey. In response to that, um, I think it's, I believe that we will be um, with, that we will be greatly limiting large turnout meetings as Councilman um, Milliken has proposed to that, you know, with the effort of trying to influence the Board of Zoning Appeals or the Planning Commission um, for a long time. I'm not sure exactly when our current plan, what our current situation will end. I realize that this emergency ordinance will be up in 60 days, but I think we'll be in a similar situation at least through the early summer. And I don't believe that it's appropriate to put all the town business on hold because some issue might arise that um, would result in large numbers of people attending, if they could. And again, I believe that 
the influence of people coming to speak at these meetings and the influence of emails should be equal in both cases. Um, this I is don't, just, yes. I, I'm so Council sorry, I didn't, mean, Mignano. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yes, this is Councilwoman Mignano. Um, so here's, here's a question, because I see, I see both sides of what you guys are saying. I, I agree that we should not put town business on hold indefinitely because we have things that need to be addressed and taken care of. Is there a different way that we could perhaps, um, maybe a compromise would be to, to have a, a, a larger window from the time that the agenda is publicly put out and then giving uh, the citizens a longer period of time, like a, a finite period of time, but a longer period of time to either um, one by one do something like, I don't know, record a video on their phone and send that into the town. So then that could be presented or email or letters or whatever they were comfortable with doing. What, um, Garrett, what do you think about that? And Mayor, what do you think about that? Uh, Garrett Milliken, I think that that's a wonderful idea, um, but I'm not sure that people will actually participate with it. It would be more of the onus on us to really do a good job of getting the word out and publicizing uh, the types of issues that are coming before Planning Commission for their consideration, as well as BZA. I think we would have to do a much better job of getting the word out in advance so that people are aware of what's going on in a timely manner where they can send a letter. A lot of times these things come up pretty quickly and it's um, hard for people to really um, marshal their thoughts into a way that makes sense and even harder for them to get it down on paper and to us. So but, I think there's- so the, the town of James Island, um, you know, the meetings that, I, that this ordinance applies to are, are regular meetings. It, it is true they would apply to um, any kind of meetings we have, but the uh, BZA and the, um, and the um, Planning Commission are already um, required to have public hearing, um, public hearing notifications. So they are, they are required to provide substantial notice. Now, some of the activity that we need the Planning Commission to work on involves workshops for the comprehensive plan. Right. And so this would be the members of the planning commission talking to the planning director about um, what sorts of things should be in the comprehensive plan. This isn't passing changes in the comprehensive plan, just discussion of that. Right. And I believe it's desirable for them to continue this work. All those such meetings have, you know, have public notice requirements and we have to note them and the public has to be available to the public. But if this ordinance passes, they can continue their work in electronic form. And um, then for BZA meetings, again, there's public notice requirements for any BZA hearing. The BZA and the Planning Commission don't just meet at time to time. In general, they have regular scheduling meetings. They meet, um, you know, monthly. It's true that they are cancel those meetings when they have no business. We are not allowed to cancel our meetings when we don't have business. I'm, I'm so sorry. This is Councilwoman Mignano again. So I'm, I guess I'm proposing perhaps if that we amend the mayor's uh, suggestion to allow for an extended amount of time for between the, between the agenda presentation to the meeting to allow for these extenuating circumstances that we have so that people could could have more time to, because they're having to do different things. It's one thing for me to show up and talk. That's, that's easier than me to have to figure out how to do a video and send it in or, or, you know, I think that we should allow for a little more time between the two. What, does anyone else have any opinion about that? Well, Councilman Mullinax here. Um, I have, just in general, I agree with a lot of what Councilman uh, Milliken is saying, and you, to some extent, do Councilman Magnato. I just, I feel that there's some, I, I, if it was up to me, this would apply to town council meetings, too, because we've had town council meetings that have been highly charged and highly attended, too. 
and um, I can think of about three or four that come to mind. Um, and I feel that there should be direct citizen participation in our borrower meetings. Now, of course, we have to meet on emergency issues such as this, um, so town council definitely needs to meet situations such as this. But I am really against discussing regular business um, during at least the height of this pandemic, and at least just give us a 60 days. You know, we can always, you know, pivot on this as time goes on. But, um, but that's just my opinion. I just kind of wanted to put that out there on how I personally felt relative to, you know, the town council meetings as it related to the, the BZA and planning commission. That's kind of all I had to say. This is Councilman Milliken. I think that Councilman Mullinax has a good point um, that perhaps what we need to consider are things that are more germane to our situation at present, which is an emergency situation. I don't think building a gas station or cutting down a tree is necessarily an emergency situation right now. And that there's probably more important things that we need to be considering uh, with respect to taking care of our citizens. So I agree with uh, Councilman Mullinax with that idea that perhaps we only need to do the essential things that are related to the emergency at hand rather than considering other things uh, um, that may not be quite as pressing. So I, I would tend to agree with that notion. Um, so this is Mayor Woolsey. The, um, the, um, you know, so we're working through our budget procedure. We need to complete our budget. We should complete our budget before um, June 30th. We have substantial work to do along those lines. The uh, Planning Commission does not remove trees or put in gas stations. And so um, that is only, and, and I don't believe that all the BZA's business has to do with gas stations or trees. So I, I think that we can work in this situation and have public comment through electronic means. And by that, I primarily mean people sending us emails or letters. And um, we can allow the public to participate electronically in our, in our meetings and that our best approach, the best way to handle this situation is to do our regular business to continue to operate as best we can and that doing so electronically is a safe manner and rather than try to put everything on hold for the next um, two months. Council, go ahead. Councilman Bowles. This is Bowles speaking. Is there not a way to parse through this stuff and say that, for instance, a BZA uh, variance request or something where the interested party wants to have a hearing and show up can we not separate those and then just let business as usual move forward electronically so if someone feels that they want a hearing they can request it for later or they can request it by different means while still allowing the meetings the regular meetings to move I forward I That's think that's an that. excellent uh, suggestion, Councilman Bowles. It, it does seem to me that the BZA is um, unusual. In, on the one hand, those are the issues that Councilman Milliken continually raises that are just things that the BZA does. They really aren't things that the Planning Commission, aren't really relevant to Planning Commission business, in my view. And that I really believe that town council needs to move forward with some of our work that, you know, that putting everything on hold for 60, you know, for the next two months, I don't think is particularly wise. I, I would hope that we would have an April town council meeting uh, electronically. And then um, I got to admit that the other advisory commissions that there's, I consider most of their work not completely pressing, but there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to meet electronically. But on the other hand, I do understand that um, with the BZA, particularly someone who has a request, if they want, they want to insist that um, they have a, if they want a public meeting and therefore postpone until um, that's feasible, until that's safe, that seems reasonable to me. Another way to because deal with this is to not, re it's to, I would ask that we vote down Councilman Milliken's change, go back to the original document and change it just to remove the BZA. And then we will come back with some suggestion about the BZA that may, you know, that we'll consider at a, at a later date. 
I think that's a reasonable, oh, Councilman Milliken, I think that's a reasonable suggestion, Mayor Woolsey. Um, but I want to also come back to Councilwoman Mignano's suggestion about potentially extending the notice period so that people can get more time to respond to agenda items. Um, if we can incorporate that into our language of the proposal, that would be useful, I think. And Council, so, Councilwoman Mignano, I'm so sorry, Mayor. I, I agree with Councilman uh, Milliken. Maybe, and I'm not talking like a big extension, but like we normally have a week's notice. Is that correct? So the agenda comes out on Friday, you know, so it's six days, right? It comes out the close of business Friday for the meeting on Thursday. So could we, is there any way that we could stretch it to like 10 days that, or, or even nine? Could we do a nine day? Um, a window between the agenda and the meeting. I, is there any way that we could do that just to allow for these extenuating circumstances that we're all trying to get through so that we could make sure that the public has adequate opportunity? Because I know a lot of, a lot of people are having, you know, they're staying at home. Some people don't always have the best internet access. And if they're not working, maybe that was where they're getting their internet access. I just think that giving them a little, a little leeway would be a good a good compromise and then i'm i'm with i'm with you guys we can go ahead and move forward with your plan here um <laughs> right right here. Here. <laughs> uh, you're not on the track, I, think, I, I i i'm i'm a, i i feel a little uncomfortable discussing um changing the timeline on agendas without asking the town administrator and the town clerk that we're um proposing that they get everything together earlier, though your proposal is really for, it would be we, would try, we would get the agenda out in. Um, like maybe Wednesday, Councilwoman Miano. And we would need to change the date by which councilmen, council members um, submit agenda items and so on. Um, and of course, I'm not suggesting, I'm sorry, Councilwoman Mignano again, I'm not suggesting a permanent change. It's just in this little short time. Mm -hmm. So what if we said to extend the um, agenda, yeah, I don't know if deadline's the right word, the, the agenda, the, uh, the item, presentation, item. The, the publication of the agenda uh, to three days earlier. I think that sounds great. And we could just make that generally true. So, um, so I still think that uh, we should probably work with the original document. And then, and so we need to deal with uh, the amendments by Councilman Milliken. And I would recommend that we vote those down and go to the original document and make those changes, drop the BZA. And um, that, you know, this the, the statement that this policy does not apply to the BZA. And then just understood that we will come back with possible changes, you know, proposals for the BZA. And then also another additional item is that um, we um, add um, three days that the agendas for meetings will be presented three days earlier than otherwise required. Does that sound reasonable? I think so. Councilwoman Mignano speaking. Yeah, um, Council, Councilman Milliken, uh, I think that also if we can just get the correct names of our uh, councils and our committees on there too, that would be helpful also. The actual names would be helpful uh, because then we'll know what we're talking about. Okay. So, so um, is there any further discussion on this amendment? This is the amendment to by substitution. And um, I again recommend that we vote this down and then go back to the original document and change that. Any further discussion? No. Okay. Um, I guess I should ask um, the town clerk. Let's see, um, can uh, Francis? Can you call for the votes? 
Well, I guess that's not working. Councilman Bowles. Oh, turn up. Oh, he can't talk. He's, he's muted. Um, this is Councilwoman Mignano. He's got, there we go. All right. All right, there we go. I'm back. Is that train horn? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we, we didn't we're, want to hear that. We just muted you. I don't, I don't know. I'm sorry. So did you have some, okay. I, or actually, I apologize. We were at, um, should pay more attention to what you're, you're what um did you have any discussion so we'll, i don't have any we about further. to vote on uh councilman milliken's um amendment by substitution um at least my recommendation is we go to the original document and amend it in a different way but do you have any discussion are you ready to continue to vote all right councilman bowles yay or nay He's muted. So he's he's no. Councilman no. Um, um, Mignano? I vote no. Mullinax? I'm yes. Mullinax? Uh, yes. I'm, I'm so sorry. Councilman Milliken? No. Councilman Wolves, uh, Mayor Wolsey, no. So the, that amendment fails. Now we're back to the original um, document. And so Councilman Miller, Councilwoman Milliken, do you want to, you want to amend um, the document to say that um, agendas will be published three days earlier than required by town ordinances? Uh, this is Councilwoman Mignano. I think we need to make that distinction. Susan would be upset. Um, if I'm I was so sorry, <laughs> Councilman. That's okay. Councilwoman <laughs> Mignano. Yes, I. That's what I would like to do. I would like okay, to. And is there a second? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Councilman Bowles. Uh, a vote. Yes or no? Yes. Um, he, let's he see if I can get this right this time, uh, Councilman. <laughs> Mignano, Councilwoman <laughs> Mignano. I can't get yes. it. Yes. Um, Councilman Milliken. Yes. And uh, Councilman Mullinax. Yes. So that passes. Okay. Um, excuse so we, me. Um, we wanted um, to. Trim I'm so sorry. The, we wanted a, 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 a statement that this does not apply to the Board of Zoning Appeals. So this emergency ordinance does not apply to the Board of Zoning Appeals. That was um, Councilman. Who wants to make that motion? I'll make that motion. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, well, I'll say Bowles second go. my hand signals. Can, uh, uh, Councilman, uh, Councilman Bowles uh, put up two fingers. Seconded, and then um, any discussion? No. As, as I said, um, we'll consider the BZA and come up with some other recommendation that we will either consider by an emergency meeting or our next meeting. All right, if there's no further discussion, um, Councilman Bowles. Yay. No. Yes. Okay. Um, Councilman, Councilwoman Mignano. Yay. Councilman Milliken. Yay. Councilman Mullinax. Yay. And then, um, uh, yeah, so, so that passes. And so then we will go to um, um, naming the um, town councils, commissions, et cetera. So, Councilman Milliken, do you um, you make a motion in favor of that? So moved. Do you want me to read in what it would sound like? If, if, if with your permission, we'll just look at the list and add it all in there. Perfect. Okay, and then is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, so um, Councilwoman Mignato got that second in first. Yes, I do. Um, and then um, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Bowles? Yes. Yeah. Councilman, uh, Councilwoman Mignano? Yes. Councilman Milliken? Yes. Councilman Mullinax? Yes. And so that passes. Okay. Is there any further discussion? That's all the business that was on the agenda. This is Bowles. Everybody stay safe. Wash your hands. 
Yes. Likewise. Exactly. Take care of everybody. Absolutely. So I think we had one person besides us that was was listening. So um, they can, you know, it's yeah, they are. gonna get yes. un, it's gonna get dangerous out there. We just need to con continue with our social distancing. Thank you. Meetings yes. adjourned. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.